So we're here spending three days in Porto Alegre, Brazil, which means the port of joy. Now this is the southernmost big city in Brazil and it's totally different than all the other cities in Brazil like Rio and Sao Paulo. It has its own kind of gaucho culture, which is like a cowboy culture and it's just completely different than anything else you've seen. Uh, it's about 250 miles from Uruguay, about 350 from Paraguay, and about 300 from Argentina. So it's like really in a completely different world than most of Brazil and the Amazon and all that in the north. It's about 2.5 million people and almost 4 million in the metro area. So it is a massive city that you might not have heard of, but there's so much cool culture here. And we're going to spend the next few days just exploring it and seeing everything it has to offer. Okay, so the first thing we really need to check out is called the Marcudo Pub, the Mar, 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 Marcudo, Mercudo, Mercado, Ado. Okay, so the first place we're gonna check out is the Mercado Publica, which is the public market in the middle of the square here in Porto Alegre. The architecture is absolutely beautiful. It was made in 1869, so it's a couple of years old. Um, and we're gonna go in and see all the different shops they have and just really get to experience this Southern Brazilian culture. Uh, beautiful, beautiful area. Let's see what it's like. When you explore the Mercado Publica, you discover very quickly that this is the cultural hub of the city of Porto Alegre. In this market, you'll find everything from delicious restaurants to food stalls, complete with all different kinds of meats and exotic fruits and vegetables. You'll also find specific stores for pet supplies, medicines, and even stores with religious icons. Speaking of the religious aspects of this place, Porto Alegre has a very interesting religious background, virtually combining Catholicism and African spiritism together to make a belief system that's unlike anything I've experienced anywhere else. You might not know it if you don't know where to look, but this market is absolutely covered in African spiritist religious iconography. This is an entire store of just mate. Look at all this. By the way, mate is disgusting. <laughs> From a standpoint of loving other cultures, I have to disagree. From a standpoint of having put that gross stuff in my mouth, I mean, yeah, it's kind of true. Wrong. They're all wrong. <laughs> That's our friend Amanda. Up top here, we've got restrooms and we've got areas for people to just sit and eat and kind of overlook the craziness. Also, the fish smell is a little bit much, but from a cultural perspective, just to get to see what it's like in Brazilian life, not only today, but also like 150 years ago, it really is a super cool experience coming to the Mercado Publica. I, I cannot say that. Oh my gosh, for the life of me, I can't say it, but you get it. Right outside of the entrance to it, across the way, is this place right here called Chalet, which I've heard is great food, so we're gonna go check that out. But first off, I just need to stop because like, look at just this building. And Brazil just does such a great job of protecting culture and protecting where things came from. Um, absolutely beautiful area, beautiful stuff. This is worth coming to, it's super cool. Oh, yeah. The more you travel around the world, the more you realize that so much of a country's culture is built around their food. And Brazil has some of the greatest food on earth. Taking inspiration from the Portuguese, Italian, and even German food, Brazil has mastered the ability to create unbelievable food that satisfies every appetite. This restaurant is called Chala de Praça 15, right behind the Mercado Pública, and it's a perfect example of what Brazilian food should be. Also though, later in this video we go get Brazilian barbecue, which for sure takes the cake of the greatest food on earth. No, you cannot have a sip. Oh no, stop. Stop trying to control my mind. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> Your brain grows. <laughs> I does sound amazing. Ooh. Good. Pretty good. I think it looks heckin' delicious. Kelly. I don't know how to be on a camera. I'd say it was pretty good. Cappuccino. More like a cappuccino. Whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> Delicious. <laughs> and they need to learn manners. So another thing we're checking out while we're here in Porto Alegre is this giant skate park. And when I say giant skate park, I don't mean like it's really big. I mean like it is the largest in South America. This is absolutely massive. You are not gonna believe how huge this thing is. For one thing, there are almost 500 feet of walls, like of vertical walls and the bowls and all the different ramps, 500 feet. Like there is so much you can do here. And it's been a little while since I've been a good skater, but man, just to be able to see this, just to be here, it's really cool. And to watch all the locals doing all these tricks, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, it is definitely a cultural experience getting to be here and be a part of all this. Okay, so as we're out here hanging out at the skate park, uh, I ran into a friend here named Alex, uh, who's a friend of a friend, and he does some really awesome stuff just serving the youth here, helping them stay off drugs and just get their life in the right place. Uh, I want to give him a second just to kind of tell about that. So what is it you do here? I'm a skatist for more than 20 years, and I thought that skate had a purpose to ride skate. I didn't know how to explain why, but I loved to ride skate. But the skate never... Nunca foi suficiente na minha vida, porque eu sempre soube que faltava algo ali, né? Porque por mais que você ande bem de skate e dê muitas manobras, é, você não vai ter só esse impacto na vida das pessoas. E depois que o Evangelho chegou na minha vida, eu conheci a Jesus, me aproximei de Deus, eu entendi o real sentido mesmo que eu poder andar de skate e entender que isso era um dom que Deus tinha me dado. E Deus tem permitido que hoje eu este, estou aqui na maior pista da América Latina, perto da maior pista da América Latina, e poder compartilhar com essas pessoas aquilo que Deus colocou no meu coração, que é o verdadeiro sentido da vida, né? porque nós estamos aqui, porque nós fomos feitos, e isso tem sido uma bênção, e tenho orado muito para que é, essa palavra consiga ser compartilhada na comunidade do skate, para que os skatistas também é, possam ser livres, é, de tantas, tanta maldade, tanta coisa ruim que eles têm uh, uh, sofrido. É, muitas vezes coisas familiares que não sabem porquê, drogas, o álcool, e que eles não necessitam disso, que eles poderiam ter uh, Deus preenchendo tudo aquilo que eles precisam na vida deles. Então, essa é a nossa missão, levar o Evangelho à comunidade do skate. That's awesome. So in the Port of Joy, this place is called the Port of Joy, they really are bringing joy to the people that live here. So you're doing an awesome job. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you. Yeah, we'll see you around, man. <laughs> uh, I am really out of shape to be doing this. <sighs> If you know us, you know that we love coffee. And so Brazil is a great place to come because this is where the best coffee is made. We're here today at Quero Cafe, which is one of our favorite places. That's why. Just check out this menu. Yes. Yes. Gonna have some breakfast, gonna have some coffee, and gonna walk around and see some more Brazil. Okay, I'm ready to try the chocolate waffle. I'm not 100% sure how to get to it. I just whipped cream at this point. Ooh. No, it's not. That's like diabetes in a cup right there. Highly recommend. How is that hot chocolate different than American hot chocolate? It is 
is so different. <laughs> Literally, when you get it, there's like chunks of chocolate at the top, and like when you drink it, it's like crazy. There's like so, so much chunks of chocolate. Literally, I cannot drink it. I have to use my spoon. I have to, and it's so thick that I can't even finish it. If you can't drink it. Ow, 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 ow. You said you couldn't drink it. <laughs> It was wonderful. It was so good. The food was Okay, now that we've gotten coffee and delicious breakfast, we are heading across the street to the Casa de Cultura Mario Quintana. How did I say that and I couldn't say that? Okay. I know, I know. So this place is super cool. The architecture all around us, like, I, I'll show you in a second, but like, it's just, it's crazy. So we're going to see this really cool museum that everyone has told us we have to go to. Okay, we're not 100% sure what this is. All we know is it's a cultural museum. It looks like there's art galleries, libraries. Uh, cafes and different things like that. And I've heard that on the top floor, there's a rooftop that has a really great view. So we'll see. I don't know. We should have learned more Portuguese. As we explored the museum, we found all kinds of Brazilian art and pieces of Brazilian history. Now we've been to a bunch of museums all over the world, but this one had a very eclectic flavor. There were drawings, paintings, textiles, woodwork, photos, examples of journalism, and incredible architecture, and some very modern art. Is anyone else super creeped out by this room? Okay, so after we went in, we found out we couldn't film in there, but honestly, you weren't missing much anyway. That was weird. Like, I love art. I love modern art. But that wasn't modern art, it was just weird videos on the wall of normal things that people did. I don't know. We're gonna move to the next place. There's some cool stuff this way. I think. Or... There's that. I <laughs> oh, wow! There's something over there we can put sticky notes on, and that's great and interactive. Let's do it. Well, we have no idea what it says because it's in Portuguese. It'll be yeah, it's like what it's like asking the community what they want to see in this gallery space next. Okay, we don't speak Portuguese, so instead of saying what type of art thing we would want, I think we should make our own art installation. Everyone, get drawing. Let's title it American Football. <laughs> <laughs> Arte dos locos dos Estados Unidos. I've taken to the bed. There's a pot of gold with a leprechaun, horse cow. I think this is Pac-Man. Uh, this looks like an actual piece of art. One giant magic tree forest. That one's by Ellie. That one's actually pretty good. Okay. Arte dos locos de Estados Unidos. One of the main attractions in this museum is the rooftop garden. Filled with beautiful local plants and amazing views, this garden actually perfectly serves as an ode to the spirit of the man this museum is named after. Hey guys, they have a record length snake out here. At the end of this hallway, there's a coffee shop. And I feel like it would be culturally insensitive. It would be rude of us to not get coffee. When in Brazil, we have to get more coffee. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. My name is Joy. We realized that our American names are very hard to say in Portuguese. So we just started making up names. So this is Joy. And my name is Iago, apparently. So that works. What's my, what's my Portuguese? Your name is Kid. They don't care, sorry. 
Okay, so if you come here to the Cultural Day, whatever Gail said earlier, you have to make sure that you go to the seventh floor because there's a really cool cafe with an amazing view. Okay, so this museum was actually a really cool experience. There were some weird exhibits, but honestly, most of it was really cool. The coffee at the top was pretty good, but the view at the top was absolutely unbelievable. Totally worth it. Why are you hissing at me? <sighs> okay, next we're going to Ferrophilia Park. Uh, it's a really cool park with a bunch of like really cultural things in the middle of the city. So we're gonna go there. Stop doing that. What are you doing? Okay, we're gonna go. So my friend Natalia lives up north in Rio, and she asked one time, hey, do you wanna go get shoe horses? And I was like, what the heck's a shoe horse? And she's like, well, it's this like really good thing with like cinnamon and sugar on it. You have to try it. And I was like, oh yeah, let's try it. And we pull up to this place and it said, churros, shoe horse, apparently is how you say that when you're from Rio, Cariocas. Is nome? Yep. Yeah. Sergio. Sergio. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Sergio. <laughs> Sergio is my best friend now. To be really honest, Ferrophilia Park was kind of a letdown. It's essentially the central park of Porto Alegre, and it's covered in really beautiful old architecture and art, but overall there really wasn't much to do except eat churros, watch dogs play, and let the kids get out some energy. My wife Autumn and our friend Callie stayed back to rest, and honestly, they didn't miss much. I'm sorry, are you good? No. <laughs> She's just mad that she lost her gum. <laughs> The people we met there were really sweet and helpful, but our conversations mostly consisted of those people telling us that the park really wasn't safe and we should probably go somewhere else. So while I'm glad we saw it, we didn't stick around for very long. Before we left though, I made sure to get a couple really good drone shots, but to add to our frustration, my drone malfunctioned in midair and the camera fully broke, leading us to have to pick up another drone a couple days later in Sao Paulo. Overall, not the best experience. So we got to a park but it wasn't as fun as we thought it would be. And But after a couple minutes here, we found some churros, and then we found some dogs, and now it's great. Now like and subscribe below. <laughs> We're not at that part yet. We still have other stuff. Steak, 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 steak. Yep, he's right. We have steak next. So the last thing we have to see is the best thing that there is to see. And I'm telling you, I've had a lot of Brazilian steak in my life from a lot of different places. I even have a barbecue pit in my backyard that's a Brazilian, it's a long story. But this place is the best one I have been to anywhere in Brazil. We're gonna go there right now. Okay, let's be honest here. There aren't many things that I'm considered an expert in, but I think eating steak might be that thing. I've had some of the best cuts on earth, I've tried the Japanese Wagyu A5s, and my kitchen is chocked full of different kinds of sous vides. But nothing, and I mean nothing, comes close to Brazilian barbecue. And every Brazilian knows that the best Brazilian barbecue in the country is in the South, and the best rated Brazilian barbecue in Southern Brazil, well, that's hands down found at this very restaurant, Schneider's. Do you disagree? Because I dare you to fight me on this in the comments. Okay, now that that's out of the way, check out this incredible food. I'm so excited, and the thing I'm most excited about right here is linguiça. I don't even know how to explain to you if you've never had Brazilian sausage, how good it is, but uh, all of this is great. It's gonna be amazing. If you have a chance, come to this place. Unbelievable. What is this one? Alcatra. How do I get him to bring more? This is delicious. <laughs> Oh. Did I not tell you this place was great? Yeah, you did. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I did not know if I believed you fully, but I do now. Okay. In case you don't know, Brazilian barbecue, or churrasco as it's known here, is where they cook meat with sea salt over an open fire on espetus, which are Brazilian cowboy swords. And from the time that you sit down until you are so stuffed that you can't eat anymore, they just keep giving you more and more and more meat. It's a beautiful thing, and it so perfectly captures the culture of Brazil. So we're here eating steak, and this song came on, Take My Breath Away. 
And I just feel like that's the most fitting song that there ever could have been for this picanha that I just ate. It it took my breath away in a way that my wife behind me is probably just, nope, she's in her own world. Chicken hearts. Okay, this is something that I honestly can't stand, but chicken hearts are definitely a delicacy in Brazil. And Callie here <laughs> loves them. Legend has it, when you eat a chicken heart, you take all of the power from that chicken. <laughs> we are for sure like the American table. So if you come here, don't do as we do, but enjoy. Okay. Now it's time for the abakashi, which is one of the best things that you wouldn't think so. It's just pineapple with cinnamon and sugar, but it's let's see how it is. Just pineapple. It is not just pineapple. Hold your tongue. That is so, so good. Okay, so real question. Is this the best churrascaria you've ever been to? Oh, absolutely. Hands down. Easily. Yeah. Okay, so that was absolutely incredible. Everyone here loved it. We're all like falling asleep now. So we've got bloopers coming up. Go back to me, finish it up. Let's get this done. This is a great video, but there's more coming. Bye. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed this crazy city of Porto Alegre. There's a lot of cool stuff to do, even though it's kind of off the beaten path. Make sure you like and subscribe below, but we also have a bunch of other Brazil videos you need to check out. So check those out right now in the playlist called Brazil. We love you, we'll see you guys next time. Also, bloopers are coming in three, two, one. Crap. <laughs> My watch is telling me I'm so happy I have an abnormal heart rate. Love this place. That's embarrassing. And I've heard from some local, I, and I've heard from some, uh, and, and I've heard, some, I've heard some, from some locals that it's That's what great. I was trying to say. I've heard from some locals that it's great. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here. It takes a lot of work to make it look like it doesn't take a lot of work. <laughs>